Hello, I'm Lewis Nichols, and you're watching the Cornwall Channel, and today we're joined by Ian McNeese. So hi Ian, thanks for joining us again on the, uh, the channel. The last time we spoke to you, you actually took us for the best fish finger sandwich we had, we had ever had. I don't know if you remember. That's right, yeah. yes, he won it, didn't he? He won the fish finger challenge, absolutely. And you took us to experience one of them. I did. Um, so you're back here in Cornwall to film the, the new series of Doc Martin. Yep. Um, and with this show, a lot of time you get a TV show that's, that's on... Um, and it's the first few series kind of is the best and then it fizzles out. But with Doc Martin, I feel it's the, the other way around. It actually gets better and better, more popular, the ratings are high. So what do you think the secret is? You are very success? kind. Well, the secret is obviously me, isn't it, really, quite <laughs> frankly. No, I have to say that, that um, we've got the luxury of, of, of doing it every other year. So there's a gap in between. So it's every two years we do it, which gives the writers and the producers a long time to really work out the scripts, yeah. really work out the arc, the arc lines for all the characters. And so that's a real luxury uh, and it pays off because when we have our scripts, they're pretty solid, I have to say. And I think Martin Clunes um, has always said that he would only do it as long as it was good. And nine series, it's still good. It's still going. So it's amazing. And I remember the last series was so popular and we actually interviewed you and Martin. And I, I was surprised online with the amount of international um, fans of the show there are. I was, I was having people from America message. That's right. From so many different countries. So does it ever take you by surprise with how it big does, the show is it all does, around the world? It does, because um, a little while ago I had an email from this lady called Gloria. Um, and she said, I've got a fan club for you in, in, in America. And I have this extraordinary fan club of women of a certain age. They're, you know, they're not entirely 22, yeah. but, they're, you know, they're going in their 60s, in their 70s, in their 80s. And, uh, and they're basically all women. And we've got about 2,000 people now. All, all in love with Bert Large, I have to say. <laughs> so it's amazing. And come around June time, quite a few of them are heading to Cornwall for Birdstock, they call it. Birdstock. <laughs> Birdstock is going to take place in, in, in Port Isaac. So that's going to be a, an event not to miss. And you've actually appeared in the same amount of episodes as Martin Clunes, obviously being all of them, which makes you a Doc Martin legend. It does. Not quite as rich, though, as <laughs> Martin Clunes himself. But you know what? I'm not complaining. <laughs> So for you, do you have a standout moment or episode that you always look back on and kind of with fond memories, makes you yeah. laugh? Well, everybody asks me that question yeah. quite a lot, and, and I have to look back and say that there is one in particular which is touched the heartstrings of a few people, which is when my son tried to work out whether he was actually my son or not, and I was yes. the father, and it was quite a touching little episode. I think I had to cry at one point, but, you know, so, so that was... That I look back as a little achievement. I always say that, you know, Joe Absalom, who plays my son, is the son I always wanted. I've got two sons, and, wow. and, and quite frankly, they've all, you know, lagged behind him. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I remember that you were actually fishing, weren't you, in the scene? Yes. Yeah, and then that's, that's right, the absolutely, happened. and we then talked about it, yeah. And no. do you keep in contact with him when you're not filming? Absolutely, yeah. no, no, we are, we are in contact all the time. I mean, he comes up to London to do the odd job, and, and uh, yes, no. In fact, he, um, he actually uh, sent me a photograph a little while ago, and he said, guess where I am? Uh, and I looked at it, and, and I th that's, that's, my, that's my kitchen in Port Isaac, and he was in my kitchen. And he has a little side job when he's not working, which is as a plumber. And considering he started the well, job in Port Isaac, uh, in Doc Martin as a plumber, he's now uh, uh, really is a plumber, plumber <laughs> working as a sideline to make a few quid. And, and there he was in my kitchen, putting in new radiators all through the house while I was away, which was amazing. So he got the experience from working he did. with you. He did, he did. So how does it work? Every series, do you expect a phone call at a certain month saying, right, we know we're going to be filming again? Or is there ever a time where you think, God, the phone's not rang yet. I'm getting a bit nervous. Well, here. I, I'm going to let you into a little secret here because uh, th there's a farm that we use, right, uh, in, in just outside of Port Isaac, which actually has a barn in it um, where we have all the studios. So yeah. we've got the the surgery in there, uh, and also the kitchen of Doc Martin and the waiting room. Lovely little sets which we use when it's raining. And we use that quite a lot when it's raining in Cornwall, quite frankly, so we have to go there quite a bit. But it's owned by the farmer, and um, guess who's the first person to know, who is the first person to know 
whether we're ever going to do another series. It's him, because they've got to rent. They've got to rent it oh, out. Oh, well, OK. So they give him a call, uh, and I ring him, obviously, constantly. <laughs> have you heard? Have you heard? And only, it's the only place ever where, you know, you ring a farmer to find out whether you've got another year's work ahead of you. <laughs> so it's great. And I've got to say, a lot of people, um, actors-wise, you can just come here, do your bit, and go. But you actually become a massive part of the community here. And I know, for instance, talking to you last time, you actually have selfies with fans, and you raise a lot of money for the RNLI. I do. Um, that's absolutely right. I mean, various uh, bibs and bobs over the years that we raised, uh, I mean, for cancer relief and, and, and also for the lifeboats and that. Yes, now, I carry a little green bucket, a little yeah. sand bucket and constantly being asked for a photograph, I say, put a pound in there, put a pound in there, and surprisingly, over the, over the time that we're here, we can raise any six or seven thousand pounds wow. just by having a photograph yeah. t t taken, you know, which is, which is terrific, so that's great. And you're friends with a lot of the local business owners as well. I remember last time the lady in the pasty shop that you, you yes. knew quite well. So you, you really do kind of get involved. I do. I do it. get involved. I do get involved with the people. I like the people a lot. And uh, just funny enough, I mean, I was just first day back. I'm up in, in the co-op just getting some stuff in for the day. And uh, a lot of people, all the locals saying, oh, you're back again. Oh, you did all right, love. <laughs> I say, yeah, back again. He says, oh, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> So that was nice. That's very nice. So the last time um, we actually spoke to you, Shane, the owner of the Cornwall Channel, is a massive fan of the Ace Ventura films. Oh, um, right. And it was only afterwards he, he, he clicked and realised that you were obviously in the film. Um, I was Fulton Greenwell, who took, uh, who took Jim Carrey through the movie, yeah. So what was it like working with Jim, and what was it like being in well, part of I such a I have to say that, you know, film? I mean, I could, you know, I, you know, my children, right, yeah. so my children, you know, I've done a lot of work on the Royal Shakespeare Company, a lot, a lot of classic TV, all the rest of it, forget it. Jim Carrey movie, I was a god. I was an absolute god, knowing that I was going to be in a Jim Carrey yeah. movie, so it was great. No, I mean, it was extraordinary because, I mean, he is a, uh, um, he improvises all the time. Uh, and you, you can imagine all those riffs that he does. Around. It's nothing yeah. in the script. So I turn up every day, you can throw the script out of the window <laughs> because it's all new. He's trying to work out new gags and stuff all the rest. So I just, I just look at him and think to myself, have you finished? Have you finished? Shall I come in now? Shall I come in now? <laughs> I, I think it's a testament to how long I lasted, that, that I, I just, just about made it right, that I didn't trample on any of his yeah. stuff. But it's a, you know, it's a challenge, it really is. And he's, he's on it 24 hours a day. I mean, he will come to the set and uh, long lighting cues in between. You know, it maybe takes two, three hours to do a turnaround, a lighting setup, and most people retire to their trailers and yeah. have a cup of coffee, read a book or stuff like that. He stays on the set and entertains the troops as they work. I mean, he'll do well. stand-up, he'll do musical instruments, he'll funny walks up and down, just, just, <laughs> just making all the crew laugh. And it's just 24 hours a day, so he never stops. He's phenomenal. And is there ever a time when you ever kind of sit down and reflect on, on your career? Because when you, when you actually look on paper, you've done everything with, with what you've worked on, and a lot of the shows you've done are, are huge, Doc, Doctor Who being one of them. Well... That's very kind of you, but you know, <laughs> once I start thinking of that, maybe time to retire. <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's, it's funny. It's I, I do these conventions mainly for Doctor Who, and, and people will come up and they'll suddenly bring a DVD cover of a, something that I've been before, and I sign it and all the rest of it. And it really is like drowning. My life <laughs> passes in front of me with all these things that I'd forgotten about that yeah. I'd done years ago, like Day of the Dead or something like that, a zombie movie. Or, you know, I mean, I've been so lucky that really. I can do classic, you know, I can do classic theatre, like going to the Globe and doing Henry VIII, and yet I can do a zombie movie, which yeah. I love. I love being that, that sort of eclectic type of career, which has been great. And going back to Doctor Who, um, you appeared obviously in four episodes as Winston Churchill, yep. but that became such a legendary part. And like you said, you go to Comic-Cons, conventions, to meet yep. people. When you obviously initially took the job on for the four episodes, did you ever anticipate that it would become so legendary as it has? I never, never understood at all. I n never understood at all because, I mean, um, I just want to show you something now, if I could. Would you mind get getting something for me, darling? Thank you very much. Which is bit gonna, of an which exclusive is gonna, coming on the channel. An exclusive coming on the channel that I'm going to show you something now which came out of Doctor Who. Thank you so much, very I much. I, I had a bit of a nose at this. That's now, incredible. here it is. This, in fact, is, there it is in all its glory, myself as Doctor Who. Uh, my children not, could not believe that, in fact, I now have a action figure. There we go. 
Winston Churchill that's action figure in, in, in Doctor Who. So that's how incredible it's been. It really has been a life-changing experience, I mean, playing Winston Churchill. I mean, I get so many people coming up uh, um, saying, you know, and congratulations with the Oscar. Of course, it's not me, Gary Oldman. <laughs> from Ken. But, but that, I think that's my like best that. part when a convention say, oh, and you got an Oscar too, that's great. Yes. So, <laughs> not quite. No, I think Shane can relate to that. He had a figure uh, well made of him, but it's really? actually Steve McFadden. So it's oh, really? <laughs> a bit unfortunate. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, for you, though, so, so far with everything you've done, what would you say is the standout career highlight for you? The, the oh, moment that you goodness me. I mean, well, well, I mean, it has to be the two things. It has to be two things. I mean, obviously, Ace Ventura. I still get, I mean, what I can't get over is that, I mean, I made that in 1995. Yeah. So do your maths. I mean, how many years is that? I was two. You were two, so makes, so how many years is that ago? 23. 23 years, yeah. 23 years ago. If I tell you that kids of the age of seven or eight will say, East Ventura. Yeah. That's extraordinary. I mean, that length of, in, yeah. I mean, that's to me, I mean, it's, I mean, the, the endurance of that is extraordinary. So that's got to be, and of course, proper job. And it made, uh, <laughs> it's got to be this, isn't it, my darling? I've got, got to say, out of all the characters in Doc Martin, I personally feel you are the best resemblance of a Cornish person with, with your sayings. Well, the do you know what the thing is, as I said before, is, is I mean, I, I relied on this lady called Nikki Bradbury, she runs the pasty shop in Cornwall. Come and get it here, down in Port Asia. <laughs> Nikki's pasties, they are, my love. And uh, she's been, over the years, given me words that I've tried to sneak into the show because I said, I gotta make it Cornish, gotta make it Cornish. So we've had proper job, cheers and gone is another yeah. one. So a lot of all, all these expressions Goes are Goes for the flow. Goes for <laughs> the, the flow, one. I know, I know. So, you know, try and get them in. I've got to apologise in advance. Um, obviously, last time we interviewed you, we played Doc Martin or Doc Who, where we gave you an actor's name and you had to tell us... This is horrible. <laughs> and it didn't this go so well. Up. OK, and um, just tell me how many did Martin Clunes get right then? One. Well, yeah, one. <laughs> so I'm a good standing here because I maybe got two. But we'll this see. quiz is actually just about you, so it's not... It's not specific. <laughs> Seven is going to be even worse, <laughs> even worse than last time. All right, here we so, go. So you appeared in Minder as yes. a character called Eric, but in what year? Oh, that's easy. That's 1984. Correct. <laughs> there we go. That's one. Oh my <laughs> God! Are you serious? 1984. Oh my God! That's amazing. Really? Got that right. The first one. Wow. Uh, you played a character of Stanley Sharkey in which film? That would be in uh, Funny Bones. Correct. So we're two so far. Uh, you starred alongside Tara Fitzgerald and Ian Hart in which film? The Man Who Went Up the Hill and Came Down a Mountain. Correct. Or even The Man Who Went Up a Hill and Came Down a the Mountain. The Englishman yes. Who Went Up English the Hill and Came Down yeah, a Mountain. Mountain. So we've got three, three out of three, three so far. Three going well. In an episode of Doc Martin, what did Bert put on his arm in order to prank Dr. Ellingham? It would be ketchup. Correct. Because <laughs> he tried to scare him about being, you know, a blood phobic. Uh, you appeared as a newsreader in a TV series called Rome, but how many episodes did you appear in? Okay, I'm going to say 24. 20. Oh! So not too far oh, off at 20. Okay, um, one wrong. What was the first ever episode of Doc Martin called? Um, Bert's Revenge. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. You'll be surprised, it was going Bodman. Oh, go and bomb me. Yes, I do. As he, as I know. I said in. a lot in there. Yeah. It was my expression. I think I brought it. I brought it out. And do you know what? We offended so many people in Bob I mean, with that one episode. I have to tell you. Hence why we never saw it yeah. again in yeah. the yeah. future. Um, what was the name of Doc Martin's first ever receptionist in series one? Oh, 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 oh! Yes, yes, yes. Cindy. <laughs> um, don't tell me. Don't tell me. It's coming now. Elaine. Correct. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Uh, Bert took over the uh, the chip shop in Doc Martin after Mrs. Who burnt her hand in the fryer. Oh. Begins with C. Yes. Cleverly, 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 cleverly. And someone's called Peter. Yes, Peter, Peter Crouch, Peter Crouch, uh, Clou Clouch, Clucking, clucking, Crunk. Crunk! I knew, so I knew it was close. right. I'm going to give, right. I'm so give you that purely because of how Go, close half it a was. Point, half a point on um, that. You played Mr. Dick in which TV film? Oliver Twist. No, no, yes, Oliver Twist. No, no, no. No, it would be um, uh, Nicholas Nickleby. 
Oh, no, David Copperfield. Yes. Got it right. right. <laughs> got it right. <laughs> and the last question. Yes. If you get this right, you would yes. have got eight out of ten. I get an Aston Martin, right? So <laughs> Shane will give you a prize. <laughs> All right, I get a um, prize. Who if I get this right. Yes. And Shane has to come up with it. Uh, who did you play? He's looking around to give him a plant. <laughs> a plant from the garden, exactly. Who did you play in Nativity 2? I played Devin, David Tennant's dad. I can't give you a name, <laughs> but that's not bad. Mr. Peterson Sr. Peters, I, want my, I want my prize. Wow, look about that. You've hey, so high five. There you, you go. Very good. <laughs> Um, have you read the scripts for the upcoming series of Doc Martin? Only my bit. Only your bit. Can we expect the same excitement that we have each series? Do you know what? I mean, the thing is, it only gets better, doesn't it, really? I can't tell you what's in it, because I'd have to kill you. But um, <laughs> let's just say that I think people are going to have a lot of fun with us, too, as they always do. Well, Ian, it's been a pleasure interviewing you again. No, and seriously. You're, you're such a versatile actor in everything that you do. And oh, I, I'm, smooth me, smooth I, me. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the show. You know, I know, I know, I know, I know. all the episodes. So thank you for taking the time to join us on the Cornwall Channel. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much.